Hi, this is Christian, and welcome back to NFL Updates Express, your weekly dose of NFL news. Coming your way, Super Bowl 53 predictions. It's the champions of the NFC, the Los Angeles Rams. The greatest show on turf is back on the NFL's brightest stage. The Rams went all in on the 2018-19 season and has certainly paid dividends up to this point. On offense, Jared Goff set the league ablaze with nearly 4,700 yards passing and 32 touchdown passes to his name. To support him has been two dynamic receivers with similar stat lines with former Patriots wide receiver Brandon Cooks and former Bills receiver Robert Woods both surpassing 1,200 yards and at least five touchdowns and 80 receptions. On the defensive side of the ball is arguably the best defensive player in the league in defensive tackle Aaron Donald. His 20 and a half sacks lead the NFL this year. Amidst controversy in the NFC Championship game, kicker Greg Zerline came up clutch with a 57 yard field goal and Jared Goff was able to evade defenders for a big time clutch effort in overtime to send the Rams back to the big game. Will it be a Hollywood ending for McVay and company? Let's find out. For the AFC representative in Super Bowl 53, it's the New England Patriots. Never count out the New England Patriots. Tom Brady is in his ninth, yes, his ninth Super Bowl. That's unbelievable. Should we just cancel the AFC? After all, following the win in Arrowhead, the AFC Championship has just essentially become the Tom Brady Invitational. It's crazy, but he's just so amazing. Back to the point. 11-5 was their record this year, and that was kind of a disappointment in the eyes of Patriots fans, but their third Super Bowl appearance consecutively suggests the season was anything but a disappointment. New England started the season off with a 1-2 record with some questionable losses to Miami on the Miami Miracle, of course, and a blowout against the Tennessee Titans on the road. However, knocking off premier teams like the Chicago Bears, who had a great dominant defense this year, the Los Angeles Chargers, who were a popular Super Bowl pick, and the Chiefs, we already know about them, the top team in the AFC, until the Patriots came to town. They beat them twice, and it shows they still have what it takes to take home another Lombardi. Josh Gordon left the team following the Steelers game at Hines, but Julian Edelman and Chris Hogan have done enough to pick up the slack. Can the Patriots stun the league once again and take down one of the league's young, best, young squads? We'll just have to find out coming up. Two of the NFL's marquee franchises square up in Hotlanta as the AFC's New England Patriots take flight in a Super Bowl 36 rematch against the NFC representative, the Los Angeles Rams. The last couple of years have been a whirlwind of sorts for the Rams. In 2015, they left the gateway to the West in St. Louis and jettisoned their way to Los Angeles. Their first season in LA was kind of a struggle, with former Rams quarterback Case Keenum looking pretty bad, and then 2016's first overall pick Jared Goff, their quarterback today, looking like a bust early. But then enter in Sean McVay, a then offensive coordinator for the Redskins. The Rams immediately turned into a legitimate Super Bowl contender as the Rams finished 11-5 and NFC West champions. They did fall to the Atlanta Falcons in the playoffs that year in the wild card round, but used that as motivation for their 2018 season to finish 13-3 and, and pave their way to the Super Bowl this season. As for the Patriots, well, they're in their fourth Super Bowl in the last five years, as 41-year-old Tom Brady keeps chugging along as he goes for ring number six. The season started off a little rough with a L to the Jags and the AFC Championship rematch from last year, and also the Detroit Lions, a tough loss to them at Ford Field. But they turned it on when they needed to, especially in the playoffs, knocking off the Chiefs and Chargers and giving them a chance again at glory atop the NFL. Now the radial symmetry in the Patriots dynasty under Bill Belichick and Tom Brady is pretty scary. So they ignited their dynasty as the underdog as the Patriots upset the Rams on an Adam Vinatieri field goal. Will the dynasty conclude in style with another dramatic win against the same team? Well, with the exception of being in a different city. Hmm. Well, the championship games are over, and now it's time for the final showdown. In Super Bowl 53, we will see the largest difference of ages in quarterbacks as Tom Brady at 41 years old and Jared Goff, who is 24 years old. Both offenses are super explosive and have the capability of providing us a great show. On the Patriots' offense are the usual suspects 
of Rob Gronkowski, who says it might be his last game. We'll have to see. There's been some rumors on that. Of course, Chris Hogan and Julian Edelman. The trio of backs for the Patriots with rookie Sony Michelle out of Georgia, receiving back Rex Burkhead, and James White, who has had his fair share of Super Bowl moments, including Super Bowl 51's three touchdown effort, will be a big storyline in this one. And I fully expect James White to have another breakout game. And for the Rams' defense, the spotlight may be on little-known linebackers in Corey Littleton and Samsung Epucom. Out of the two, Epucom has had the quieter season with just 40 tackles. However, his big-time performance in the L.A. versus Kansas City midseason shootout put him on the map with an interception, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, and a sack to take down the presumed MVP Patrick Mahomes. As for Littleton, the undrafted player out of Washington has now turned into one of the league's solid young stars, especially on the L.A.'s front seven. He currently leads the team with 125 total tackles and turned in a dominant performance in the NFC Championship with 12 tackles and the victory over New Orleans as he's also a second team all pro. He's played pretty solid this year. Now the Patriots linebackers are no slouches either with Dante Hightower and Kyle Van Noy having nice seasons as especially Van Noy has turned it up in the postseason. Offensively, the Rams will need Todd Gurley and C.J. And Anderson, the running backs, to have effective days in the trenches to alleviate the stress off of Goff's passing attack. Most people will discuss electrifying receiver Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods, but ultimately if the ground game doesn't roll, it won't be good against a Pats defense that continues to defy all odds. New England will have a tough task with defensive backs Stephon Gilmore and Devin McCourty having to match up against Cooks and Woods. However, the most interesting matchup will be in the slot. In Week 10, Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup tore his ACL on a non-contact play, which thrusted Josh Reynolds into the spotlight. But in the NFC Championship, Reynolds came up clutch with a big catch on the Rams' final drive in regulation to help set up the tying field goal and eventually the Rams making it to the Super Bowl. The Reynolds vs. Patriots slot receiver J.C. Jackson matchup may not be talked about very much, but it could provide the key for a possible Rams victory. The Patriots O-line will need to be elite once again, as they've kept Tom Brady off the turf so far in the postseason. Now, the way the Pats lose this game would most likely be if Aaron Donald and Dominican Sue and Dante Fowler are getting in the face of five-time world champion Tommy Terrific. Now, the offense will get their due, so the Rams will need to capitalize on the few opportunities that they get to fluster Brady. So at the end of the day, who's taking home the Lombardi Trophy? Now at the beginning of the season, I had the Rams taking on the Jaguars in the Super Bowl. Well, I got half of that right. The Rams obviously in the Super Bowl, the Jags didn't even make the playoffs or finish with a winning record. Not, uh, you know, obviously don't doubt Tom Brady in that case. Overall, I've been very impressed with how Los Angeles and New England have dealt with adversity to get within a game of hoisting the league's most coveted prize. Ultimately, I believe that this Super Bowl will be another close one that will come down to the last drive of the game. Whoever has the ball last could be taking home the Lombardi. In this game, expect the first half to be a little sluggish like it has been in a couple of Patriots Super Bowls, with the, first, with the fourth quarter providing all the fireworks. At the end of the day, I trust the experienced Tom Brady to engineer a clutch, game-winning drive against the Rams and give the Patriots their sixth ring and franchise history. New England, 31, LA, 27. These teams played against each other in Super Bowl 36 as we take a look at the Super Bowl flashback. The Patriots ignited their dynasty under a tenacious defense. They were up 17-3 for the majority of the game. The Rams were able to tie it. And then, of course, Tom Brady in the clutch with a game-winning drive under two minutes. The Patriots kick a game-winning field goal by you-know-who, Adam Vinatieri, and the Pats start their dynasty. Patriots 20, Rams 17. It's time for the X Factor the key player that will need to light it up on both teams on Super Bowl Sunday. We'll take a look at an offensive player for the Rams, a defensive player of the Rams, and then we'll take a look at the Patriots' offensive and defensive key players. So first, for the Rams, it's running back C.J. Anderson. Now, I know Todd Gurley's been the star. He was in the MVP hunt. 
but look no further than C.J. Anderson for the L.A. offense. And he was once a free agent twice this season with Carolina and Oakland, um, and then being released. And it seems like he's found his niche with the team. Prior to the NFC Championship, Anderson had 66 carries for 422 yards rushing and four touchdowns. It's been a revelation after being a part of three different teams this year, and it seems like he has supplanted Todd Gurley in terms of total carries and I guess the entire impact with the team. I expect Anderson to outperform Gurley once again and provide Los Angeles with a needed boost to keep it competitive throughout the game. For the defensive star on the Rams, let's take a look at Dante Fowler Jr. Defensively, the media focuses on their talks on Aaron Donald, Marcus Peters, and Adama Kinsu, and for good reason. But however, one of the key players that could cause havoc and give the Rams a boost on defense is Dante Fowler. He was the key contributor in the NFC Championship game as his pressure forced Drew Brees into a season-changing interception in overtime and helped to send Los Angeles to the big game. If he can replicate his impact, well, I see the Rams as they could possibly win their second Super Bowl in franchise history. Now for the New England Patriots, we take a look at James White, the running back. His 14 carries for 110 yards in Super Bowl 51 set a record, and his Super Bowl 52 performance wasn't as dynamic, but he still reached the end zone. I've noticed more than ever before, Brady is relying on White in the short passing game to help move the chains, and so Sonny Michelle will get the bulk of the carries and in the trenches, and then of course Rex Burkhead out of the backfield, but it will be up to White to provide Brady with the easy pitch and catch opportunities to help set up the big bombs as the game progresses. To cap off the X Factor, it's Kyle Van Noy, the linebacker for the Patriots. Now, if you tuned into the AFC Championship, you may have seen Patrick Mahomes running sideways. Kyle Van Noy's impact is the reason why the Patriots are playing for their sixth Lombardi. His 10 tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble has given the Patriots confidence to rely on their pass rush and give cornerbacks Stephon Gilmore and Devin McCourty time to cover Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks on the other side of the ball. If Van Noy can get in the face of golf, it could be a long day for L.A. Thank you for watching NFL Updates Express. Enjoy Super Bowl 53.